Yes, good evening. Uh, I have the privilege to introduce to you Scott Coclumbo uh, and Dane Zimmer, who's the Special Populations Coordinator at EWCTC. Uh, as you're going to hear, Scott is a talented young man who was able to qualify for the state competition in carpentry. Uh, he's been at, enrolled at EWCTC since a sophomore uh, and studying construction, construction trades. So at this time, to talk a little bit more about it, I want to introduce Dane uh, Zimmer from EWCTC. I'm a new advisor to Skills USA. Um, this was my first year, and it's been a, quite an exciting and adventure for everyone, I believe. Um, in January, we had 30 students that qualified for district competitions in Beaver County. Um, from those 30 students, 12 of them qualified for states. Uh, we did end up taking 10 students with us, and um, I have the privilege of having Scott with me tonight. Um, it was quite an amazing experience to watch all of the students work. Uh, we were at the Lebanon Expo Center, and um, I will let Scott talk to you a little bit about what he was building, but from what I saw on the photos, I wish I had them with me this evening. Um, it was perfect. Uh, he is very talented, so. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, as I went to districts, like she said, it was back in January, um, I got to build a, it's a little mock-up kind of scale thing. It was um, pretty much the side of a house. You had to do uh, framing for a window, for a door, um, for your common rafters, and it was, it was a little bit challenging, but um, I was able to succeed and I placed first. And I went to states this year and um, it got a lot tougher. It was a lot more, um, a lot more work to put into it. But uh, it was a good experience and I think it's going to be good to prepare me for my future and hopefully be a business owner. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, yes. Scott, that station 39. You know what I'm Thank you for your service. Thank you. So Scott, what are you going to do when you get out of school? Um, I'm hoping to get with the company, uh, stay with them for a couple more years, learn a lot more stuff that I didn't need. completely learn in the classroom because everything's different outside of the classroom. Um, hopefully learn, learn a lot and hopefully start my own company. How long are you in the program then? Um, I was in since my sophomore year, so this would be my third year. Can you just mention the national uh, competition that you'll be attending? Yeah, um, since I placed first at States, I am uh, able to go to the national competition. It is in Louisville, Kentucky. It's through June 25th through the 29th. Um, from my understanding, it is a three-day build, so it's going to be a lot more um, challenging than what states was. A lot more uh, blue current rating and everything. Where'd you go for states? For states, it was um, the best way to explain it would have been the upper half of a uh, house. So on the upper half, I had to first build a wall. Um, I framed in a window, had to install the window, uh, drywall the inside and then put trim around the window. And on the outside, I had to build a roof going up so like it would be a porch roof. So it was a lot more, and the blueprints were a lot more challenging. There were some numbers that you actually had to search for. Um, they're really, they're making it sort of a challenge for everyone. And how long did it take you to do that? Um, they gave us six, was it six hours? Six. About six hours. and. Um, a lot of people did finish, um, but I finished with a half hour to spare, so I was able to check everything. I took my blueprints and I was standing, looking at it, making sure everything was good. So, like I said, probably about five, five and a half hours, six hours. 
half hour spare, you probably could have put it in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the way you were moving. <laughs> so, do you know the challenge before you're going in? Or do you, do you literally get the blueprints when you go to the challenge? Um, the, I guess I could have mentioned, on my junior year, I was able to go to districts as well. So I knew what the project was there. Okay. And I actually completed it first in districts my junior year. Okay. And I went to states and I placed third. So going into states, I knew a little bit, but the project last year compared to this year was a lot, lot more change. It was not the same thing. And then um, nationals, Mrs. Zender did some research for me. She found prints from 2015. <laughs> um, yes, they're a little outdated, but at least it gets me in the right mindset. And it has um, basically a shed is what I have to build. Some of it out of metal studs, some of it out of wood studs. Um, and I got to build the roof on top of it too. So and how did, do I you have it? those three days or so to do it or no? Just yeah, you have three, three days. Three days. Um, normally they'll give you, I don't know, but um, mm -hmm. like for states, they gave us about a half hour to look over our blueprints so that we knew kind of where we needed to get started. Um, I know the students that we took for the teamwork, they had to do a safety presentation where they got a poster and they had to list 10 things for to do safely, like uh, safety precautions that they will take, and then 10 things that um, might happen to cause a safety issue. And uh, from looking at the score sheet, it looks like there's going to be a sort of presentation that I have to do on something like that. How many people will be going with you? Like, what, what, is this a team? Um, I did a solo competition, so it's just me that works on it. Um, so when you were doing putting in that window, there was nobody else? Nope. Even another set of hands just to hold it? Nope. Yeah. Um, the judges were able to help a little. Like, they would help you hold your wall as you stood it. But other than that, they really couldn't do much. Um, they're told not to interact with any students. It's all, um, they don't know your name, they don't know where you're from, they keep it confidential. So um, it's so that there's no like, favoritism. I have one more question. Yes. Do you have business cards yet? I have one more question. How did you choose? What made you, is when you were in high school, how did you choose CWT CCTV? Um, I like to do a lot of work with my hands. Uh, I'm never stop working. Uh, I work two jobs as it is now. I work construction and I also work at Walmart. Um, I work non-stop on I do the co-op through Votech as well. So uh, I'm Who's that with? Who are you with? Uh, Jim Thomas. Oh yeah. Construction. Okay. And, um, <coughs> I come here for my first four periods, then I leave and I go to work instead of going to the WCTC, and um, I get a lot of experience there too. So you'll be looking for a good contractor who wants a good employee? Just mention. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy that does a guy. Right? One thing you forgot to mention when Mr. Palmer asked when he was doing that for school, he's, he's going to come over to his favorite principal's house and see a couple jobs. And nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, not only is Scott talented at EWCPC, but he is a true privilege to have a student in this high school. He's a leader, uh, and if I think if you talk to his teachers, they'll say he's compassionate, he's dedicated, uh, and enjoys helping others. So, uh, go to mission next year, and as a token to, for you, there's a small gift. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.
the EW CTC Senior Recognition Ceremony will be Tuesday, May 22nd, and that will be at 7 o'clock at the uh, Great Lake Tribe Senior High School. <coughs> And the WCTC Joint Operating Committee meeting notes from April 25th are attached to the board's agenda. And the next EWCTC Joint Operating Committee meeting will be Wednesday, May 23rd. And that's at 7, and that is at the EWCTC. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Education planning is the Yes, thank you. We'll begin with the student report. Uh, so, Sandy's not feeling too well tonight, so I'm going to do her a little spiel for her. Uh, for all the elementary schools, May 25th will be the senior walk. The graduating seniors dress up in their caps and gowns and walk through their former elementary schools while the elementary children watch. Um, sixth grade camp will be May 16th to 25th. Uh, just to put this out there. I was a huge fan of sixth grade camp. I loved it, and I really think it's a good day. We're still doing it. Uh, for Bagley, uh, second and first grade will present their spring shows on May 24th. Uh, the Shrove Summer Games for K through fifth grade will be May 30th at LES. And for Mountain View, fifth and sixth grade band chorus concert is on May 16th. And for junior high, we have ah, May 15th and 17th, we have the seventh and eighth grade band and chorus concerts. And then we will have also the Coral Cats. We have a lot of arts at our school. Just putting that out there. We have a lot of concerts at our school. I mean that in a good way. Just put it in. And then for the, for the senior high, uh, on May 25th, we have the last day of instruction for seniors. Thank God. Uh, the graduation is May 31st at 7 p.m. on Rossi Field. Come support our seniors. And without further ado, Chloe Poland. She's going to be a representative next year with me. Chloe Poland. Hi. Hi, I'm Chloe Poland. I'm a junior at GLSD, and I love high school. I love everybody here. <laughs> I love meeting new people. So. <laughs> for you for what you've done for us this year. I haven't done that much with the same as well. One of those topics is how many shows are talking about. Thank you so much for everything. No problem. Yeah, you can follow Samantha Beer. Thank you. 
and I'll get to all of these in more details in follow-up in follow-up slides. Medical is actually decreasing by 342,000, roughly 7% decrease. Teasers retirement is only increasing this year, $286,000, roughly 3.77%. As you will remember, my previous year uh, presentations have been focused a lot on Teasers retirement and the impact it has had. We're still paying at high levels, but our incremental costs we don't anticipate jumping up as, uh, as significantly as they have over the prior years. Um, special education, this is sort of an outlier for us this year. Uh, we're looking at a $463,000 increase, which is around 21%. Um, we spent a lot of time at the board retreat last night trying to explain why. We believe we have, we've identified um, the, the reason for that increase and we're reflecting it in our upcoming budget. Uh, transportation going up $120,000, which is a little under 4%. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Business operations, we're looking at a decrease of $136,000 or slightly under uh, 4%. So let's focus on wages. Again, the projected increase by $286,000, roughly 1.21%. Uh, on average, our wages normally increase anywhere from $700,000 to $800,000 a year. Okay? So this is, this is somewhat unusual. I wanted to know, prior to 2011 12, our average annual wage increases for contract employees was 3.85%. And when I say contract employees, I'm talking about people who hold contracts, people who are part of bargaining units, those sorts of uh, associations. I'm not talking about substitute teachers or overtime rates or double overtime or those sorts of things, or summer workers, I'm not referring to them. But since 2011 12, our average annual wage increase uh, for contract employee has been about 1.48%. So what it's shown is we've been able to reassign our existing faculty, you know, once we see retirements, resignations, we've been able to reassign people to appropriate position, positions, um, maintaining the same level of support to our students educationally, but helping to control our long-term reoccurring costs. Because this plays significantly into the teasers portion that we'll talk about a little later, you know, because the amount of your contributions for retirement are driven by your wages. So being able to control this uh, uh, portion of our budget is, a, is an important piece. Um, staffing changes. We've had 11 retirements over the last year. We've had one resignation. We're in the process of eliminating seven positions, three of them teaching, one classroom assistant, one personal care assistant, one secretarial, one custodian. In addition to that, we're adding one new position and mentor accordingly. The net reduction of our staff, or re the net reduction of our, it, it equates to six positions, which results in a decrease of about $507,000. Um, many of those positions that we're not replacing are positions through attrition, so there are no furloughs occurring, no people being here losing their jobs, okay? So there's, there's, there's been a, re a reduction in staffing, but it's, it's been um, because of these resignations and retirements. Okay, medical. Uh, projected decrease of 342,000, roughly 7%. I haven't seen that in my 20 some years of doing this, so this is a pretty uh, unique situation that we're in right now. Um, the medical premium is decreasing by 2.4%. I just wanted to highlight why. We, like many other districts in Westmoreland County, participate in the Westmoreland County Public School Health Care Consortium. We're self funded, we manage ourselves, we review our claims, and we set our own premiums. Recently, we've had a very good trend. Premiums have been controlled over the last 10 years. The average increase has been about 3.9%. And over the last five years, they've only gone up by about 1.4%. Now, if you were to look at Highmark's averages and their national averages, they're increasing by between 10 and 12%. So we've been doing very, very well. Now, we've done certain things within our plan designs where we've um, encouraged people to move to different coverage levels, um, we've talked about uh, prescription, carving out prescription, which has helped to control our costs. So we've done some creative things to help to control those costs. So this year we're seeing a decrease. Do not expect that in future years. But with that said, I don't expect, because we're getting a decrease this year, to see a 5 to 10% increase next year. I feel like we're funded very fairly. Um, the other piece of medical is other post-employment benefits. Basically what that means is when an individual retires at an early retirement incentive, we continue to carry them on our health care for eight years or until they reach age 65. Well, in the 17-18 school year, we were carrying 20 retirees. 
We have eight of them who are dropping off or meeting their life expectancy of the, or, or age 65. And they're, yeah, life expectancy. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> 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 oh, Scratch that term. Try to erase that. <laughs> We've had eight individuals who are no longer covered because they've either, either met the eight years or reached the age of 65. So that's up to reduce our costs. <laughs> okay, pieces of retirement. We always come back to this. A projected increase of 286,000 or a 3.77% increase. The employer contribution rate is increasing from 32.5% up to 33.43%. So what I just tried to make an easy statement, for every $1 paid in wages, there's an additional 33 cents that is redirected to Keezer's retirement. So it is an expensive plan. While we're not seeing a significant of an increase this year, 33% contribution level is very high. It's extremely high. So in 2017-18, our budget amount for this line was $7,587,000, which was 14% of our operating costs. In 1819, it's jumping up to $7.8 million. It's still holding at 14% of our operating costs. So what I'm trying to show you there is, yes, it's a significant portion, but it's holding steady. So if we take a look back at prior years, in 2009-10, that costed us $1,019,000. It only accounted for 2% of our operating costs. Now it's up to 14%. In 1617, it jumped up to almost 7 million, which was 13%. So, and, and the reason I use these two years, they're our, our most recent actual years. Two seven, the 17, 18 school year were only budgeted numbers. I wanted to use the most recent actual, so I use 1617. It's increased by almost $6 million in seven years, which is a 585% increase. So when you hear school districts are struggling, um, you know, this is one of the main uh, areas in which uh, it's affecting all school districts, just not very really trust school districts. Uh, to take it back one step further, I just wanted to show you where we came from, where we're at. In 2005-06, the employer contribution rate was 4.69%. The net employer cost was 557000 As I mentioned, this year it's 32.57. That net employer cost is three point, a little under 38 in 1819, it's going to 33.43. Now it's supposed to cap out in 22-23 at 36%. And then it's supposed to stay there for a while before it starts to decline. Okay? Um, so we still have a little bit of a ways to go, but we went from 4% up to 32%. So we've kind of climbed that mountain. I feel that we're, we're near the top. And from a budgetary uh, impact, yes, it accounts for a large percentage of our budget, but I don't envision us having a significant of an increase year to year as we have in the past several years. So I'm trying to find a silver lining there, and that's the silver lining. This chart here just shows you the black columns are what our expenditures have been when you include Pisa's retirement. The orange column is what our expenditures are for everything else. So everything else. And I think that if you look at this, we have no control. You have no control locally over Pizza's retirement. The school board does not decide what the rate is. That rate is set in Harrisburg, okay? You have no control over that. We can't vote not to contribute. We can't vote not to set aside funding for that, okay? It's a state law. We're required to. That orange stuff, we have more control over. So I think that's something we should feel proud of, that, you know, that is not climbing significantly. Um, we're doing our best to maintain the level uh, of expenditure of those areas that we, we have control of. Okay, special education. I know we spent a lot of time on this last night, so I'll try not to spend too much time on it tonight, but it is very important and it's impactful uh, for next year and possibly in the future years. Um, so it's increasing by $463,000, 21.56%. The three areas that we identified that it increased were Service-related costs increased by over 100,000. That's for our IU services, speech services, legal services dealing with special education, occupational therapy, and physical therapy services. Cyber charter school costs have increased. Okay, we've had four new students move into our district that are going to a cyber charter school cost uh, that are special education. 
the tuition rate for a soccer charter school student is about um, sixteen or seventeen thousand dollars a year. So it's significant. Okay. In addition to that, the cyber charter school tuition rate for uh, the 17, 18 school year increased by $1,000 per year. And so those two things combined account for over $75,000 increased cost to special education cyber charter school costs. And then placement costs. We had a total of eight students that had some significant level of placement that were over $250,000. Three students were paid, placed out of district due to behavioral disability, five students from local group homes, had significant physical disabilities. Um, just wanted to note the Delphi Village group homes, there's nine of them, and they uh, house 70 students. So that's a large portion of our special education costs. Are there any questions on special education? We went to it in, in, in great detail last night, but I didn't know if you thought about it before we bring it up. Okay, we'll keep moving. Transportation, projected increase of 120,000, 3.98%. Uh, the 2018-19 contract, which is the is year six of year seven, which calls for a three percent increase. I just wanted to note it was a seven-year contract. Year one was a six point one seven percent decrease. Year two was a weight rate freeze. Year three was three percent. Year four um, was three percent. Year five was a rate freeze. Year six was three percent. Year seven is three percent. So I just didn't want uh, anybody here to think that we settled the contract and it was a straight three percent annually. That's not the case. But in the 18-19 school year, we are uh, uh, dealing with a three percent increase. And then we have an additional one percent built in there for special education for super bands and mini buses. Special education uh, needs and hazardous road needs. Business operations decreased by 136,000, 3.98 percent. Uh, the majority of that is debt service, okay? We knew this, we planned for this. Our debt service is dropping by around $250,000. The result is when we borrowed the money from 2016, 17, and 18 for the new LES construction project, we anticipated using $515,000 in this school year of our reserve account. So that helped to, to reduce that budget line. And the reason we're able to do that is in future years, debt service will continue to decline. Okay, so it's not like it's going to spike back up. And it also assumes us using 790,000 of capitalized interest. We did include capitalized interest into our last borrowing, hopefully to give us greater budget flexibility, not only in 1819, but in future years. Uh, EWCTC costs increased by 44,000. Um, our share of the average daily membership increased by 1.13%, so we pay a little less than 50% of those costs. So as their cost goes up, our cost goes up more significant than possibly Darien Lanier because we pay a large percentage with more students than attend it. Um, cyber charter schools, I mentioned special education for cyber went up, and it also went up for regular ed students. It didn't go up by $1,000, it went up by $390. We also have more regular ed students going this year than we went last year. That resulted in a $37,000 increase. And then tax collection cost increase is going up by $30,000. The City of Lake Trobe uh, Tax Collection Service, they're increasing the rate from $15,000 per year up to $45,000 per year. That's a 205% increase. That is included and that is reflected by this budget. What's that? What's that? What's that? Um, basically, they're stating they're not able to offset their operating costs. So to off offset their operating costs, they're stating they need that additional $30,000 to do so. I have presented other alternatives to them about outsourcing right. it, right. using like a Burkheim or a Keystone Municipal. Um, they're researching it, but no decision has been made. I put this into the budget because I, if, if the answer is what I'm thinking it may be, we'll be responsible for this. Okay, summary projected revenues. So let's look over revenues quickly. Local revenues are going up 350,000, state 140,000. The majority of that is from users' retirement. Federal, we anticipate going down 30,000. Other, there are no changes. Total increase of $460,000. Um, local revenues, real estate is going up by $125,500. We're fortunate. You know, our real estate goes up every year just because the, ass the, the assessment within our community, uh, the assessed value of homes goes up every year. Um, I just wanted to share with you, the majority of that is, um, so the assessed value of homes within the Greater Lake Trail School District have gone up by all, about 1.4 million, okay, just for the, over the, over the last 12 months. 
So that helps to just generate additional income at our existing millage rate. Our 10-year average is about 1.8. So there's growth. There's growth. Not every school district can top that. We do have growth within our school districts. We're fortunate in that way. Okay, so we can't lose sight of it. Delinquent real estate taxes, I uh, anticipate them going up 100,000. I use trend. When I deal with delinquent collections, I look at trends. So I anticipate that we can uh, bump that up about 100,000. Investments, I increased that 75,000. So I went from 50,000 to 125,000. I shared with our finance committee earlier, we were, you know, years ago, that before the, the, the uh, 2008 crisis, we were generating 500 to $600,000 a year interest earnings. Recently, we've gotten as low as 25,000, okay? We're trending upwards now. You know, we're getting close to that 2% return on investment in our CDs and those sorts of things. So, you know, this year we're already over 125,000 in interest. So I felt comfortable bumping it up to that 25. I do see continued growth. So uh, it, it made sense to adjust that. Pass through funds. We receive IDEA funds through the Westmoreland County or the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit. Uh, last year we got 570,000. We anticipated going up to 630,000. So I adjusted it accordingly. Uh, state allocation. Okay, we're, we're basing our state projections based on the 2018 state budget release. I've received no negative news telling me that we shouldn't be. So I'm taking it around with it. Okay. Um, we're assuming plan con reimbursement for 16, 17, 17, 18, and 18. And the 16 issue, the 17 issue, and the 18 issue. We received our plan con Part H approval. So now I have to do is submit my, my reimbursements, and I'll start getting, because I've been budgeting for these reimbursements for the last two years, but they won't reimburse us until we get the age approved. So I have to get those, those forms in. I want to say it's about $198,000. So that's, that's, a, that's good news. Um, and we, we assume to increase funding for PISA's retirement. As I mentioned, the state sets the PISA's rate, but also the state is required to match 50% of whatever we contribute, okay? So PISA's, you know, increased $143,000. This is just a snapshot. If you take, if you include PISA's, the black columns are state funding, including PISA's. State federal funding, including PISA's. The orange columns is when you remove PISA's, okay? So the state funding is somewhat level. Now you'll hear them say, yeah, but we're putting more money in. They are. They're putting it into the, to the PISA's retirement. And we're using that to offset our PISA's costs. We're not going to take their money and go, you know, buy new smart boards or something because we got to use it because we have to put it towards towards its purpose. Um, so just like to end with a couple things, highlighting some budgetary unknowns, um, state funding. They could come back in in uh, June and tell me they're going to cut the state funding, but uh, I have not heard that. I do feel confident that it's going to get the support that it needs so that we will get additional state funding. Federal funding is a good target. Mr. Paramica sends me an email once a month telling me that our federal funding has changed for the year we're in. I'm not talking for future years. It's, it just goes up and down, correct? Good. Okay, so it is a moving target. And usually by this time, they've told us what we're going to get for next year. Yeah. And that number didn't come out of the federal program. Yeah. Long, so. So. But so what it does, it'll change 20 it, times. It'll change. So it is a moving target. target. PISA's retirement rate. You know, prior to Act 5, they anticipated, uh, they put projections out to 2035-36. Well, now they only go to 22-23, and it's that 36%. I hope we start seeing it level off or decline, okay? But will it? I don't know. You know, because it, it is taking up a large percentage of our operating costs. Special education, this last year is a perfect example. Prior to the 16-17 year, we were trending right around 2 to 2.1 million. And then all of a sudden it bumped up to 2.6. And so we all went spinning and we were like, why did it bump up to 2.6? And I shared with the finance committee, I did a year-to-date study of this year. We're trending towards 2.6 again. So it's definitely here to stay for now, uh, but it's a moving target moving forward. Cyber school enrollments and tuitions, you know. As, hey, as ADMs decrease, cyber charter school, school tuition goes up. Okay, so those schools are getting rich as our ADMs go down. So that's always a concern. Can we go back to special ed for one minute? Yes, you may. When we talked about special ed before, we have to provide education for those kids till they're 21. There are certain students, certain yes, students, we do. Right. What percentage of was, is that, I remember, oh, you talked about that. I didn't give you a percentage, it is very small. Okay. Maybe. Three or four, five, 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 four, four, four students. Thank you. Yeah, 
there are some that get educated until they're 21. Uh, um, we talked about four students that were okay. particularly expensive, right. but there are more than that. I can give you the number. Okay. Um, and then just future, some future budgetary concerns. You know, if these are a rate increase, we always have to be on top of that. Future capital projects, I believe uh, Mr. Thomas is going to be presenting some, some roofing things tonight, if not in a future meeting. We've known that's coming, but we need to continue to plan. You know, a $2.5 million roof project, you can't start scurrying for that. You have to plan for that. Uh, so we, we have $180 million in capital assets in this wide. It's our job to continue to maintain those, okay? As, as, as on top of it as we think we are, we can always, I'm sure, do better. State budget allocation, it comes, it goes. Um, federal budget allocation, same deal. Act 1 index. We're not going to have the flexibility in two years or in a year to say, hey, we missed this. Let's, let's increase taxes five bills. Act 1 does not allow that. Act 1 sets the index based on the statewide average <coughs> wage and the employee cost, cost index, and we have to operate within it unless we can apply for exceptions, which we may not qualify for those exceptions. So we can't always be looking at next year. We have to go a little bit further, and we always have to study what's coming down the road because nobody wants to be standing there on the table going, how'd that happen? Um, early retirement incentives. We've offered some early retirement incentives. We have an early retirement on incentive uh, tonight for you to consider for uh, non-classified employees. Uh, but we have offered them, they have helped us. We've got people to retire, and which has allowed us to reshift roles and responsibilities and sort of eliminate positions and control those costs that I showed, that 1.48%. A lot of it has to do with these early retirement incentives. Now, I've been saying that we have somewhat of a young staff, and I've been reminded maybe we don't have young staff, but we have a middle of the road staff. The more, the more we offer early retirement incentives, back in uh, 2007, 8, 8, 9, when I came on, we had 20 to 30 people jumping on it. You know, now, last year, we got eight. And so that's kind of my point. I don't think we're going to get the 20 and 30 anymore. We might get the 5 to 10 uh, range. So we can't count on an early retirement instead of balancing something we didn't anticipate. Special education, you nailed that. Transportation, we know we have one more year in the contract, and then we have to make a decision where we're going further with that. Recommendation, I recommend that uh, our administration here recommends that we approve a proposed final budget the amount of $56 million. It reflects a shortfall of 170,000, which would be half a mil. Um, our next steps we will continue to evaluate operating expenditures, and we'll continue to review potential revenue funding sources. So I'll come back and, and have a discussion at the finance meeting in June. Hopefully, get the finance committee meeting uh, group support, and we'll make a final recommendation to you at the voting meeting in, in, uh, in June. Okay? Are there any questions? You want to go through the uh, okay? That's why we're here. I'm sorry. So we thought we would highlight some district accomplishments before uh, Georgia starts. Dan had talked about like Title One funds and how that, that funding number changes. We do receive Title One, Title Two, and Title Four funding. It's about six hundred thousand dollars all together. Title One we use for our school-wide Title One programs at Bagley Mountain View, or Bagley and Kelly S. Title Two we use for classroom reduction. Title Four we use for innovative teaching. Um, Judy knows. A few months back, they were talking about eliminating Title II funds all together. They are talking about $200,000, right? So I go to Dan's office and say, listen, we prepare. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, the email comes out. Not only is Title II back in the budget, fully funded, right. but Title IV now, due to safety and security concerns, they're talking about dumping a ton of money in Title IV fund. But I can't go to Dan and say, this is what we can expect, because at the conference that I went to last week, where they typically give us those numbers and they told us we have them Wednesday morning. Tuesday afternoon they said, by the way, we don't have their allocation. That's for a grant that's due at the end of June and we're talking about a significant amount of dollars. And, and what's even more concerning with that is that we're, we use these monies to fund salaries. These are staff positions. So those that money is full. It's not like we use it to buy a couple pieces of equipment. We just can't get those. We have programs in place. We have students enrolled in those programs. We have expectations that we need to meet. And that funding, if or when that funding would ever go away, that puts you in a really bad spot. I've been doing federal programs for five years, and every year in the spring, your funding adjustments come out. Five years, we've never been adjusted up. 
five years, we get adjusted down every year. Becky, you did federal programs at Ligonier before you came. Did you ever go up or did you, it typically you go down. So again, in the spring, I give Dan a number and then I've got to go back the next spring and say, oh, by the way, we were amended down $30,000. So it's, it's, sometimes it's a moving target. I think it's difficult enough that since he brought up, I thought I'd just jump in. There. Dan, I, I do have a question. Yes. Uh, the, the allocation, the state allocation that the school district got last year, was it more than what you anticipated or less? When I say last year, 16, 17. 16, 17, I believe that it was slightly more in 16, 17 than what we budgeted for in 16, 17. 17, 18, they're holding true to what their, uh, what their uh, proposal was. Okay, and uh, in, in our uh, finance uh, meeting, we, we talked about surpluses, mm -hmm. and, and we talked about a anticipated uh, surplus that uh, of last year, and then possibly this year, and, and you were really comfortable in, in actually talking about expenditures compared to revenues at this point. Yeah, at this point, I think it's a little bit early. Uh, what I shared with the Finance Committee is that on the expenditure side, we're, we're, we're trending at a deficit, and mainly because of special education. We budgeted $2.1 million, and we're trending again at two point six. so we might be $500,000 short in our revenue, or I'm sorry, in our expenditure. But what I'm hoping is we're going to come in maybe a little bit higher on our revenue projections, um, you know, refund of prior year expense, some of those other categories where we might get a couple hundred thousand dollars and get us back um, to level funding. Uh, but the year before, we did operate as a surplus of around 620000 This year, 1718, I'm not real certain where we're going to end up, up at. Maybe a deficit, um, but we're not, we're not going to miss the target by much. And within the last five years, would you be able to tell us uh, what the surplus has amounted to uh, within a five year period? I, I do have that information off the top of my head, though. Now I, I wouldn't be comfortable guessing at that, but I can provide this this board with that absolutely. Well, and, and, and also, there's only been one year where uh, expenditures actually outpaced revenues, and, and that was in 2013, and that was by a hundred thousand uh, dollars. But revenues have exceeded expenditures in every other year from 2011 every year. 2011, uh, 2012, 2014, 15, and I believe 16. Uh, but this year, you just don't feel comfortable with that. But with with the type of information, uh, and, and we're talking about a, a tax increase of, of half a mil. Uh, do you think that that we could withstand uh, not raising taxes uh, this year? Could we? All, all, although you know you're you're making that recommendation, and I'm fighting you every chance that I can get. Uh, um, could we? So basically, the question is, could we come up with one hundred seventy thousand um, dollars? I believe we we have to have some more conversation. Uh, but if push come, comes to shove, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, the question I have though is, when you say that we haven't, uh, revenues have always exceeded expenditures you're looking at a report yeah. and where's that report from um, i can give it to you and, and actually i'm not trying to go inside you either so please don't tell it right now and the reason that i ask is in 2015-16, our audited financial statements show a deficit of $1.4 million because of the cash that we had to pay out for the start of the new LES construction project. As I shared with you the Finance Committee, we were refunded $993,000 of that during the 16-17 school year, which allowed us to operate in the surplus. So the greater nature of school district performance audit, Who's, who generates this report? Oh, it's actually generated from the, from the state. From the state of Pennsylvania, okay. I have to look into it, I just want to make sure that the, the, your statement doesn't agree with our audit, and that, that is a little bit concerning. So okay. you have, are they removing factors from this when they're generating these reports? Uh, well, from, from actually what you were talking about in, in our finance meeting today, they probably have. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah. So back to your uh, question about can we get to zero mills? If the board's direction is to get from 170 down to zero, I will work with these, this administrative uh, team and we'll come back with a recommendation. Thank you. And, and I'm, I must say, anytime I've asked for any information, you have come for me uh, very quickly. <laughs> I've asked a lot of questions and I really appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. Anything else? You guys going to keep uh, going with this? First slide. Yeah, don't click ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might like to <laughs> So we, thought we would like to talk about some of our accomplishments this past school year. And um, at the end of every year, we talk about these. And I would be remiss if I did not look at all the building principals, as well as the teachers and support staff that helped to make these possible. So everybody that's sitting here as well, um, I'd like to congratulate on these accomplishments. We're going to talk about programming first and what falls under that. You've heard many presentations here um, at the board level for several initiatives that have occurred this school year. Um, one of the big things that we've done is statewide school district visitations by our staff. We went to Upper St. Clair, Upper Marion, Southerton, Kiskey, Southmoreland, quite a few more to look at various schedules. And the bullet number two talks about the changes in the schedule that will occur for the upcoming school year. And we're very excited about that as well. And there were presentations on both of those. Also, we talked about the addition to the Senior High School Mentorship Coordinator. That position this year was paid for by a grant. And we were able to increase the number of mentorships that our students participated in and job shadowing opportunities with Anthony Princeton working with making the connections within our um, businesses and our community uh, organizations. And if you just drop down to increase the job shadowing and mentorships, I just spoke with Mr. Mays. We went from 25 students completing a mentorship last year to 100 students completing a mentorship. So I think that speaks volumes about our career pathway system and the fact that it is embedded and it's embedded in our scheduling process as well as the addition of courses that you heard actually last month that we talked about in our elective programming to help support that. You had uh, Ms. Rebel as well as Mrs. Lambert here talking about the transformation of our libraries to media centers and basically they have been transformed into maker spaces for our students and the utilization of those facilities has just skyrocketed. You heard about Project Lead the Way and um, the courses that we have offered with Project Lead the Way this year we were able to train a teacher in the medical detective programming. This was at the junior high school and we actually had AJ Haberkorn come and talk about that. We went from two sections to medical detectives and I don't want to put this okay to eight sessions. So the student interest in the medical detective course, which then leads to our biomedical pathway, um, as you can see, two to eight, from two sections to eight um, sections, just phenomenal. We have quite a few dual enrollment courses offered, and we continue to increase those. One of the most recent was with our European history course being offered, so when students are in a class, in the high school, they can gain credit, whether it's through Westmoreland College or Penn Highlands and um, Seton Hill, St. Vincent, etc. We have added an AP research research course that Ms. Regal will be teaching, and that was actually presented here last month as well. In addition, a few more programming um, initiatives that we that have been accomplished. If you've ever been to the high school in the morning, I know Mrs. Mays was, as I'm looking after Breakfast of Champions, um, our special education department under the direction of Kelsey Beckus has worked to develop a Cats Cafe, our high school, uh, where students from our artistic support classroom actually are learning the life skills and running a, a true cafe with selling coffee, cookies at times, donuts, etc. So if you have an opportunity to just swing in sometime in the morning, it's right by the gymnasium across where our concession stand is. They take a lot of pride in that. Uh, elementary programming wise, and I know it says elementary, but it's actually K-8. to uh, The music department K-8 to was able to implement an online uh, music curriculum that provides for consistent uh, music instruction to our, our elementary students across the three buildings. Um, they love this online uh, piece. 
Uh, it's not textbooks anymore. It's relevant to kids. They enjoy it. It's interactive. Uh, additionally, at LES, we were able to add a, an emotional support classroom, uh, which allowed us to bring some students back from placement, get them in our environment, um, and, uh, and a program that we, we expect to continue at the new LES as well. Dr. Pinus, through uh, some funding uh, with the foundation, was able to add the digital signage and communication system that you see when you walk into the CSC. That's not just here at the CSC, that's throughout five buildings um, in the school district. Uh, provides us with a, 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 a way to communicate across the school district, across the school, um, both every day, but in an emergency as well. George, you want to talk about that first couple of Sure. We also talk about, obviously, the professional <coughs> development needed to support these initiatives. And um, in January, I believe I spoke about the presentation we had from Kent Pakel from the Search Institute. Um, you've heard a lot about the 40 developmental assets. And the presentation and the workshop was about how to develop uh, relationships with students, appropriate relations, which impacts the culture as well at the school. Um, Project-based learning. This Friday, we will actually finish up the final phase of project-based learning, and all of our secondary staff, 7 through 12, have been able to be trained in project-based learning and are beginning to create and implement those lessons. Um, with the help of Dr. Pinus, our World Language Lab now is online, but not actually in a room in a World Language Lab. Our students are able to access that lab at their seats with the Chromebooks that we have and then in, um, the help of Dr. Connors as well as the World Language Teachers for implementing that. Every K-6 to math instructor, which means every teacher in kindergarten, first, second, third grade, all teach math and then half of the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers. We're talking about 60 professionals got to go through a, a full year of math solutions professional development. Uh, led by the elementary principals, I think they would agree this is the most impactful math professional development that we had at the elementary level in the last 10 years to 12 years uh, here at Greater Latrobe. It, it wasn't just one day, it was multiple days. Some of it, yes, was sit and get. Uh, some of it, though, was also coaching related, where uh, professional development coaches came in, met with our teachers, talked about a lesson, executed the lesson, and then debriefed about it. Um, the feedback from staff was tremendous. Um, they really hoped that we could pursue the coaching piece for this year. Mrs. Haller reached out. That coaching piece had a, about a $350,000 price tag on it. So like the Rolling Stones say, you can't always get which one. Um, so what, maybe we'll have to hold off on that, play the lottery a little more, see what Mr. Watson can dig up. But um, we were able to do that. We were able to do that at the same time that the principals led an update to the Go Math program. Um, if you remember last year, we purchased the updated copyright, so we implemented a new version of Go Math K-6. If that's not enough, we, up, we implemented the new uh, language arts program at the same time. I don't know whose idea that was, but it wasn't Dr. Tech. Um, but we're talking about new language, yeah, uh, new language arts program, K-6. Again, you're talking about 60 individuals. Those uh, math teachers, K-1, 2, 3, yeah, they were also implementing a new language arts program, one, two, three, as well. So you're talking about a two-prong approach, but uh, again, effective leadership by our elementary principals with help from the teacher leaders. Um, we're talking about summertime professional development, ongoing professional development through the year that's going to continue uh, here this Friday during our in-service days. But I, George has done a lot of talking, and, I, and there's been a lot of focus on career pathways. But when you look at elementary wise. Math, language arts, two new programs. It's incredible we're able to do that this year. Good morning. Moving on, you hear a lot about the importance of relationship building um, in our schools and the positive climate and culture. We talked about the change in our schedules for next year for providing more opportunities for our staff to really get to know our students. Um, and with that being said, we implemented this past year our web crew and our link crew. You actually had the opportunity to see some of the students that served as mentors in those programs as well as students who actually um, came into the school as new students from other districts as well as our students as well. We will begin, begin doing that and we continue to add more activities throughout the entire school year to support that. When we have, uh, when we put, um, 
a focus on something. It's not just to have a speaker come in like I talked about with Kent McHale. It's what is the follow-up after that because it's real nice to have somebody come in and get you motivated and get your staff motivated, but if you do nothing with it afterwards, honestly, it's pretty useless. So with the follow-up for the developmental relationship um, presentation and Kent McHale workshop that we had in January, all of our teachers, K through 12, developed lessons surrounding how to build those developmental relationships with our students. And the teachers shared out to their departments and um, talked about the lesson they were implementing, um, what asset or relationship it was actually addressing, and then suggestions, follow-up, et cetera. So this will continue to occur. Um, we, are, we have a big focus on this, and with the new schedule, we're very um, confident that we'll be able to continue to support this as well. We have, with the Career Pathways, you might have heard of the Pathway Manager system, and the students actually utilize that to track their pathway, track their in interests, but along with that, comes a survey where it assists us in identifying students who may not have a connection with an adult or a role model in the school. So with that information, we are able to, at each building level, through counselors and through teachers, really reach out to those students who appear to maybe feel that they don't have a connection in the school environment, and to put forth the effort to make certain that we do everything we can possible to make certain that student has somebody that they can connect with and feel confident to go to in the school. Karen Katz, that's elementary. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, we were having a side, we were having a side conversation. No, it, along with uh, Breakfast and Champions, Karen Katz gives us an opportunity to rec recognize students at every grade level elementary that are just being exactly that, Karen Katz. Good role models, helpful. Um, Time for them to shine. And the Breakfast of Champions was uh, students being recognized for uh, exhibiting the 40th developmental assets, which again is back to the developmental relationships, etc. cetera. Uh, we always uh, look for good motivational assemblies, both junior and senior high school had an assembly with a um, Marine, I believe, and the name is Slipping Me. Uh, basically talking to students about not just making good decisions but overcoming obstacles. Um, the gentleman had lost a leg and talked about how his recovery from that and his choices that he made in life to continue to go. So when you come across these obstacles, the fact of never giving up and um, you know how you dig in and really make those appropriate decisions to continue to pursue and, and do everything you can to have a bright future. It was outstanding. And I know that we talked about the PSSA um, support and I should say motivation with our eighth graders who will be going to Kennywood Park here next two weeks. So I think that's it. Well, with that, we appreciate everybody um, just listening to this. I know so many times we do get caught up in the budget, how we have to, but um, I do feel we have an outstanding staff, support staff, um, administration, teacher leaders, et cetera, that make it possible, as well as the support of the board, um, to have all these accomplishments. So thank you for giving us the opportunity. Are there any questions about anything?
still in use and operation. Uh, we have, for your approval, next month there's attachments for each one of these items. Uh, Nello Construction will be an ad of uh, 1539. Nello Construction, an ad of 5000. And Westmoreland Electric, an ad of uh, 1423. Also, in facilities operation and planning, uh, we will be approving the award, awarding of bids for roof replacement for the senior high school. Also, approve award bids for the athletic wood floor refinishing for the senior high school and the bid uh, approval for moving services at LES. Set plan con part H, project finance approval. And facilities operation and planning meeting minutes are attached also uh, from May 3rd. Uh, also, LES monthly construction report is also attached. Our next facilities operation planning committee meeting will be Wednesday, June 6th at 3.30 at the Avenue Building. Student activities and recreation Yes, thank you. Um, uh, athletic uh, committee meeting minutes are our cash for the recruitment. And um, we will, um, on the agenda next week, approve the addition of a ninth grade um, girls volleyball team. Thank you, Mr. Community relations, Dr. Zorch. Park and Rec meeting next week, May 17th, 4.30 on the 7th. Thank you, Mr. Zorch. Westmoreland Intermediate Union, Mrs. Mays. Yes, there's a summary of the WNA board meeting <coughs> meeting on April 24th. Uh, they are attached. Um, and the next WIU committee meeting will be Tuesday, May 22nd at 7 p.m. Um, in the WIU Portland. Thank you. You want to go ahead and work policy also? Sure. Um, uh, I have some information here on the PSBA uh, Delegate Assembly. Um, and we are being asked to, for the nomination of three voting delegates. If any board members are interested in uh, serving on the assembly, the assembly would be held at the um, <coughs> in October. The de delegate assembly where you would actually be voting on new policy and everything would be held on um, October the 19th and I believe that was Saturday. Um, so if anyone's interested in attending that, um, that conference and would like to be a voting delegate, please um, let Mrs. Alcosta myself know and we'll, we have to approve you by the board and all that has to be in by the end of June. So um, think about it and um, look up the state conference and see if you're interested in attending and let me know if you would be willing to be a voting delegate. We can have up to three voting delegates. So um, we haven't had any the past couple of years, but if anyone is interested in attending that this year, please let me know. Um, the next board policy uh, committee meeting is going to be held on Monday, May 14th at 11 a.m. in the administration building. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Technology, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, our next technology committee meeting will be Tuesday, June 19th here at 6 p.m. at the CSC. Thank you. Superintendent's recommendation. Uh, next week, uh, there will be several, <coughs> excuse me, several resolutions. Um, uh, which are designed to realign the athletic office. And the first one is to create the position of an assistant athletic director. Um, and then in the uh, second resolution would be the approval of resignations of various positions in the district. But the one that is assigned to the realignment of the athletic office would be the uh, resignation of Zachary Hyde as the secretary in the athletic office. And then, I'm gonna skip one down, um, you'll see the approval of support personnel appointments, um, Zachary Hyde as the assistant athletic director. So um, what these three resolutions do is to realign the athletic office by creating an assistant athletic director, having the secretary that is presently in that position uh, resign from the secretarial position and appoint that person as the assistant athletic director. 
Um, in addition, um, we will have recommendations for two teaching positions. These are replacement positions for the 18-19 school year, and they are for the family and consumer science position and the mathematics position. Both of these positions are presently opening at the senior high school. Um, as well as appointing Zachary Hyde as the assistant athletic director, as is the norm, um, we do hire summer psychologists to help um, with additional testing in the summer. And at this time, we have one, uh, which is Caitlin Ford. In addition, we will have some summer workers who are generally high school students as well as college students who work within the major in the custodial area um, in the summer months um, to assist with cleaning and sewing. Um, also, we will ask the board to approve support personnel appointments. Um, this is a retroactive appointment. It's a volunteer coach um, that is helping with the baseball. Um, and his name is Cody Helfrich. Um, in addition, I think uh, Mr. Watson mentioned a uh, non-contractual full-time classified employee retirement center, um, at, which has been reviewed by the board and is also attached. We will ask the board to approve that next week. And for tonight, we do have one item that I'd ask the board to move on resolution. It is resolution number 208, which is to approve a memorandum of understanding of an unpaid leave of absence. This is an MOU with GLEA, which basically delineates an unpaid leave for Cynthia Pompilia, who is a senior high school teacher, um, which at the conclusion of the 18-month unpaid leave will retire from the school district. So we would like to open the floor up at this time for discussion or comments about this particular uh, resolution. Makes me very sad. Pardon me? Makes me very sad as somebody's proud of this kid. She's going to lay a huge hole beyond her classroom. She's a young engineer, so there's, there's a lot of pots she's got in the position. Sorry to see you, Jeff. I am too, but why don't I write the jet? Pardon me? She, she wrote in the jet, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right? Okay, so I'm first. That <laughs> 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 <Like> is. <laughs> Call shotguns, and right. what you're saying is pretty much. <laughs> All right, seeing no one uh, wishing to speak, um, I move for adoption of resolution number 208. Second. So, motion on the floor. Questions or comment about the motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. And under other business, you can note, and, and um, Adam did such a nice job speaking <laughs> to all the concerts that are going on in the district, um, he might not have seen this list. And clearly, there are many activities. Um, notably, is the prom this Friday um, in the Grand March is at 4 30 in the Senior High School Auditorium. Um, the baccalaureate service um, for the senior class will be Wednesday, May 30th at the Holy Family Church. And of course, commencing with um, the graduation ceremony on Thursday, May 31st. Um, pray for good weather. On um, the rain day is Friday, June 1st. Thank you very much. Um, the board meeting days, we have our regular meeting next week, Tuesday, May 15th, as well as our meetings in June, our June 12th, and May 18th, or 19th. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, seeing that there is no other business for a third meeting, the motion to. Can I just make one call here? Yes. Sorry, but I, I just wanted to take time for thank Dan, Mike, and Jordan for their report. Uh, also, I want to make a comment or two. Uh, we were very fortunate to have the business manager we have. And that goes from the top down. We have a superintendent that I'm sure works for the best of the district. And over the years, I've seen so many things happen. You know, I, I came on the board 
I think it was back in 84 or something like that. It's been so long I can't even remember. <laughs> but I'm, I'm so proud of what you did. And in the times when I see other districts saying they have to get rid of this, do that, cut this, and raise taxes and everything. So I think we're really blessed that we have the district and the administration that we have. And Dan, I uh, hope you come back to us instead of that half bill. I'd like to see maybe no taxes. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank everybody. Dan. Thank you. I'm, pr I'm proud of our district too. I have so many people who come to me and they say, you know what I moved down here? You know why I moved here? Because of the quality of the education that we have, and we have a low tax rate base for Westmoreland County is one of the low points. So, uh, I've worked with you guys off and on the last 30 some years, and I, I'm honored to be here. And a lot of people say, why do you want to get involved with that again? Well, for me to stand here and listen to our teachers, our administrator, and a young man that stepped up, that, that makes you really proud of you. So I want to thank everybody. <coughs> and God bless you. Thanks, Congressman. I move for adoption of resolution number 209. Adjournment. Motion on the floor and second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. <laughs>